Good evening, everyone. How are we all doing? Good evening. It's five o'clock or one minute after five, according to my watch here. We have about 28 people on the call. Um, please permit me to wait a few more minutes and we'll start five after five so that we have a few more people. This is a really important topic, very important to me. And I know it's important to parents also. So let's give the opportunity for more people to join. I'll send reminders just now so more people can join. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. I think we can start now. We have a sizable number of people. Okay, we are recording. Excellent. So welcome once again. Good evening to all of you. It's a pleasure to meet once again at Parents Roundtable Discussion. Today, we are talking about play. So 
So last week, uh, was it like, yes, sometime last week or two weeks ago, we, some of us were in a discussion about screen time and there were loads and loads of questions. We said, screen time is not good, too much screen time is not good. And the questions that came, so what should we do? We are busy and um, the children, what would they do? How would they play? So today we have Charity Mustafa. She is a physiotherapist. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She's going to tell us how important play is and how we can help our children to play. So Charity had her physical therapy degree from the University of Ghana. Then she specialized in neurodevelopmental therapy from Barag one hospital in Soweto, South Africa. Then she did her Master of Philosophy in Public Health at KNUST. She is currently at Princess Marie Louis Children's Hospital, where she manages their um, physiotherapy department. Charity is going to tell us about child development and play and how important this is. So Charity, you are very welcome to Parents Roundtable discussion. Please take over. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so welcome to another Roundtable discussion. And today, like uh, Dr. Marbel rightly said, we're talking about play. But before we get to play, we're going to talk about child development. Am I sounding clear to everybody? Yes, you are. Okay. So let's go on. What is child development? You can see my beautiful baby on the screen here. That's my latest niece. Okay. So we'll move on. So this is how my outline is going to take. I mean, it's going to be like, there'll be some definitions. We'll talk about types of development. We'll talk about influencing factors, timelines for motor development, development, some developmental tips, and then we'll conclude. So what is child development? Child development refers to the physical language social and emotional changes that occur in a child from birth to adulthood. What is developmental milestone? Because it's some of the terms I'll be using along. What is developmental milestone? These are things that most children can do or achieve at a certain age range. What is motor development? This refers to the development of a child's bones muscles and ability to move around and manipulate his or her environment. So these are the definitions. Now there are various types of development. For there are five areas of development. We have cognitive development, we have social and emotional development, we have language development, fine motor skill, gross motor skill. Each of these developmental processes go in hand in hand. It's not like one will finish before the other. They go hand in hand, so they overlap. As this one is developing, this one is also developing alongside. So what is social and emotional development? This area of development involves your child's ability to interact with others and deal with their emotions. So it covers areas like learning to share, which we'll see that this is acquired through a lot of play activities learning how to behave themselves, learning how to control their tempers, dealing with frustration, learning to have empathy. Out of all these areas of development, social and emotional development has the most lasting impact on your child's life. Because after the child walks, after the child learns how to walk, the rest of his or her activity will be centered around this area. So it's a very crucial area. Cognitive development. Cognitive development, cognitive has to do with learning the brain. 
Cognitive development focuses quite simply on their ability to explore and understand the world around you. This includes, among other things, problem solving, learning the cause and effect of things, searching and finding. The world is a fascinating place and the option for teaching your child is boundless, it's vast. It cannot be exhausted. Outdoor activities, especially are amazing for development of all sorts. Let's take note of that, outdoor activities. So let's move on. Okay, so gross motor skills development. This is the fourth one we're talking about. Gross motor skill development covers larger muscles of the body. And this involves skill acquisitions like walking, running, kicking, lifting, throwing, etc. This is the development of these muscles that enables your little ones to be able to develop the following skills. And it's not just limited to this one. Lifting of their head, learning to sit, crawling, walking, running, jumping, throwing, catching, skipping, climbing. Gross motor skill development starts long before your baby is mobile. So gross motor development, in fact, before the child is born, gross motor development has already started. And we'll see how. Fine motor skill is the next one we're talking about. Fine motor skill is developing, this involves the smaller use of, of, of smaller group of muscles. These are muscles that are used for fine movements. This involves the use of the fingers, the hands, and the wrist. The most important fine motor skill that your little ones in the early years will develop or will have is the palmer arch, the pincer grip, the bilateral hand play, the scissor skills. In fact, if as new birth, you see that they have the, the um, palmer grabs reflex. In fact, it's, it's, it's a fine motor skill. If, if I, it forms the basis for developing fine motor skills. So that is why when the child is born and the palmer grabs is not absent, it is a red flag. So what are the influencing factors? I'll go into detail in some of these developments. What are the influencing factors, things that will affect the development of a child? We have genetics. Genetics in the sense that, I mean, it's widely spoken that African babies develop faster than um, Asia and European babies. It's a genetic thing. So we tend to develop faster physically. Our physical development tends to develop faster comparative to other uh, continents. It's, it's an inbuilt something. What about environmental factors? So environmental factors also play a huge role in a child's development. How much are we exposing our children? How protective are we over the children? So these are, um, these are things that will influence the child's ability to grow, I mean, develop well, or will bring about delay. There are some environment that are too protective of the child. Don't go here, don't go there. I mean, we're too watchful. So it's limiting the child. There are some environments that, I mean, it's a loose environment for that child. And that also enhances the child's ability to develop. So it's a crucial factor we have to consider when it comes to child development. What are the social factors? Social factors is interacting with the environment, interacting with people around us. So it comes to play. I mean, and this side of, of, of the world, we don't really have much problem because when you put to bed, a lot of people come around, they want to come and see the child, people carry the child. It's all part of social development. I mean, they are looking at the child, they are smiling, they are talking. The child is not talking back, but the child is learning how to socialize. So that is not really a big problem here. But of course, now we are becoming, little by little, we are becoming like the Europeans. So if we finally become full-fledged Europeans in our way of life, then our social 
the factors of social environments will also be affected and it will affect our children developing faster. And it, it might change the narrative of African children developing faster than our other counterparts. Economic factors, it also plays a role in child development. There are things that when children have, it enhances their development better. There are some things that they have and it hampers their development, like the screen time we talk about. Because parents who can afford screen, I mean, screen time for their children, uh, of course, people who are well-to-do, they can buy the tablets, they can buy all the, I mean, uh, the phones, all the gadgets that the children need, but it has a way of hampering the child's development. Other people, of course, also cannot provide the needed environment for that child to interact better. So economic factors also play a role. Then we come to the biggest one, culture. Very influencing factor. In fact, as for culture, it's so, um, our whole being is encapsulated in culture. I mean, this is the child, when we say culture, we're talking about the caregiver's expectations, our care, our child raising practices and our social interaction with our children. So caregiver's expectation. How do you expect your child to develop? What are the things you know about child development? What are things to expect at different stages? Some people, I mean, it's like they want to speed up development. So they have all the necessary things to be able to speed up development. That one too has its own challenges. The child is not prepared to do something, but we're forcing the child to do something. So culture plays a big role our expectations for those children, especially when we have two or three of them, then the comparison thing come in. You want to compare one child to another, how one child developed to how the other child, and you're doing comparison. And that seems to be enshrined in our culture. You hear mothers say, oh, maybe we do on until seven months. We do I mean, we hear that in, at the clinic all the time. And so caregivers' expectation is, is a huge thing our caregiving practices, and also our social interaction. So these are all influencing factors when it comes to development. Now let's come to timelines for milestones. What do I expect my baby to be doing at certain stage of their life? So we open our eyes to the following things. So these are the timelines for one month. What should my baby be doing at one month? Well, one month, babies make eye contact and stare at faces. They stare at noise. Hearing is fully developed at that time. Just that they are not communicating back what they are hearing to you, but it is developed at that time. They can see, they can see things. In fact, baby can see from two, from eight inches to about 37 centimeters. So their eyesight is actually developing. Babies are not born blind. They can see, except that they can see more contrast colors quickly. So, I mean, they can see colors like black and white quickly. So babies' eyesight is there and it's developing right from birth. So babies are not born blind. You hear people say, oh, babies cannot see. Please, they can see. It's just that the distance from which they can see varies. They can see, that's why they can see a mother's face when you are breastfeeding. That distance has been calculated to about that between that eight, eight inches to about 37 centimeters thereabouts. I mean, so the babies can see your face. It's just that they can see contrast colors. So that's why even when you are doing therapy for a newborn, maybe a baby that was born with already some red flags. When you want to stimulate the sight, then you use practically black and white objects from the beginning. They begin to cool, gaggle, and make other sounds by that one month. You will hear some sound at that one month. They cool, they gaggle, they make some, some funny sounds that you cannot comprehend, but they're trying to tell you something. They're trying, my vocal cords are working, and you know, I'm responding to the environment. 
They may be able to turn their head from side to side during tummy time. Maybe, I'm saying maybe. So if at one month, your child is not turning their head from side to side, there's no cause to worry. He can, he sh I mean, it's, there's no cause to worry. In the subsequent months, he, may be, he or she may be able to do it. So it's not like it's a max that he should be turning, they should be turning their head from side to side. That's why I said, maybe. We'll come and talk more about tummy time as we go along. May, may be able to hold their neck up for brief moments. They make equal movements with their hands and feet. So you see, if both hands are going up, the feet are also going up and they make it together at that one month. Tummy time is an essential developmental, I mean, position for development. It's a brilliant position for development. And you see, tummy time can be done in various ways. In fact, right from birth, you can actually start tummy time. So when you hold your babies on your chest, it's a tummy time you are doing. So holding your baby on the chest, facing your baby, looking at your baby right from day one, you started tummy time. And so not just putting the child on the surface, that is tummy time. You can do tummy time with your shoulders. You can do it with your laps. You can do it in various ways. Just ensure that the child is facing a surface. That is tummy time. The child is just lying on the tummy. That is tummy time. It's a beneficial position that we should learn to practice. Some parents will say, my child doesn't like tummy time. We have to make it comfortable for them. Maybe doesn't like to lie on the surface plain, flat. We can incline. They lie on, I mean, the mattress, like incline slightly. Just make it fun. For that, if that baby doesn't want to lie on a surface, at least the mother's body or the father's body is there. It's all creating tummy time and it's an awesome a position for development. Okay, so what should we expect at three months? Social smiles in response to others and the child may laugh. So if at three months your child is not really laughing, you know, they can make some smiles. It's okay, it's fine. So don't beat yourself up and, and be worried that my child is three months and is not laughing, no. That at three months, the child can lift the head, the chest during tummy time and possibly support upper body with the arms. So as if the child is propping up in a propping up position, the child will be able to lift the head and their chest off the surface by three months. The child should be able to kick when they, are, when they are placed on their back. They should kick at something when they are placed on their back. As if look, in an attempt to play with the thing, to reach out to the thing, they should be able to kick at three months. When the child pushes on their feet, when placed against a solid surface, you see that when you put the child down and you even put your hand under the child's foot at three months, they push on your hands. That is part of the milestone motor development. The child is learning to do some form of bicycle movements and that is helping to strengthen the lower limbs. The child watches faces. So we'll look around for faces. And then in later milestone, in later months, the child will now recognize faces and, and will begin to have a stranger reaction. So that's where they start recognizing faces at three months. So they might not cry when somebody else picked them, but over time, they will cry when a stranger picks them. They follow objects with their eyes. They turn their head from side to side. So at three months, they should be able to turn their head from side to side. When I said it earlier in one month, I said may, but by three months, they should be able to do it. So. What else can they do at three months? They make bubbling sound. They imitate sounds. You see, ah, you hear the child say, ah. It's, it's imitating sounds. They have improved, they, they, they may have improved eye-hand coordination. So you can see that the child is looking at the hand. The child observes the hand. 
the child can bring the hand to the mouth around that month. So they reach out for objects and may be able to grasp the toy, open and shut their hands. So that open and close activity of the hand. So at three months, if your child is always having feast and is not opening the hands, then there's a cause for concern. The child's hands are always open and not grasping a toy. There's a, a cause for concern. The child brings hand to mouth. And this place, this is a place that a lot of parents limit their children. You see, so at this point, a lot of, you see a lot of parents trying to wear mittens for their children. We don't want the children to take their hands to their mouth. But it's when they explore their hands that they are learning about textures. They are learning the different parts of their body. They are learning so many things by just putting their hand in their mouth. It's a state that we should not stop. So we are putting meetings on the children because they are putting their hands in their mouth hampers the development of the children. We, at this stage, we should just be cautious of the kind of toys we give them. We should not give them two small toys that they can choke on and not two big toys that they cannot hold on to. Sizable enough that the child cannot swallow. And let's allow our children to put their hands in their mouth. It's a developmental milestone. They are learning textures. They are learning proprioception. They are learning my, my, where are my fingers in space? They are learning to do that. And this one is preparing them for even fine motor skills. It's preparing them for it. So please, let's, let's not um, be quick to put mittens on, on the hands of our children. We'll limit the ability to develop the arches of the foot. We'll limit the ability to be able to explore their fingers for further motor development. The child might, bring, might, the child might begin to learn how to roll from the tummy to the back at this stage. So if the child is not doing it, it will happen in subsequent milestones, except there is a problem, then that might be delay in happening. But if there's no problem, the child should be able to do it in the next milestone. What should we expect at six months? We have to, the children are able to now recognize familiar faces at six months. So when a stranger picks them, they will cry at six months. They enjoy looking at themselves in the mirror. They enjoy the mirror activity. I mean, it gives them a feedback. It also gives them body awareness. They begin to learn about their body. They begin to learn about, I mean, emotions, faces. So when you smile in the mirror, they smile and they look at themselves smiling. I mean, it's, it's all part of developing their perception, developing their social skills and emotional skills. They try to talk to you or bubble back at you at that stage. So the talking might not be clear talking, but I mean, you hear them trying to bubble some things to you at six months. They may, they may say consonants like, mm, but you, you hear them say this, and then they are trying to develop language at that stage. So when the child makes a sound, you, you could make it into something that is now recognizable. So if I'm making, mm, okay, so mm, mm, you, 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 you know, you say it along with a child, you can actually make, say something that sounds like that for the child. What are you trying to do? The child is now beginning to learn language skill. So the language ability is beginning to develop. The child may respond to his own name by turning, when you call the child, you mention the child's name or the pet's name you have for your child. When you mention the child will begin to respond by turning. They may, if not, they will respond in later milestones. The child begins to be curious about their surrounding world. So the child is looking around, is so fascinated, fascinated about the things around. So this is when you are exposing this child to colorful toys the baby gym, in fact, the baby gym right from, from the word go. It is a very good tool. It's a very good resource 
for, for development. It has various colors around it. It has different types of toys around it. I will show you how the baby gym looks like. So the child begins to roll now from tummy to back. At six months, they should be able to roll from their tummy to back. They make attempt to get up on their hands and their, their knees or rock back and forth position, like being in like four points kneeling on your hand, like in the crawling position. I mean, they begin to go there. They are not fully there, but they may attempt to now be up right on their, their hands with an outstretched arm. They will be able to come up and then they want to be on their knees. They may be able to sit without supports. So if your child is six months and is not sitting without support and is making attempt to sit, that's fine. In subsequent months, she be, he or she will be able to achieve that, except there's a problem. Child begin to explore objects using the mouth. So the mouthing continues in the six months. In fact, it becomes more stronger in the six months because then they want to touch everything. They want to feel everything. You just be cautious at this point not to give them sharp objects because sharp objects will harm them. You don't give them hot objects. That's also dangerous to them. So just give them sizable toy that is not harmful. They can pass toys from one hand to the other. So bilateral hand activity surfaces around that place. So you give the child a toy, the child can put it from one hand to the other. In fact, when you give the child a toy and the toy is in one hand, they will, they will try to reach out with the other hand for another toy. And they begin to maybe start banging them together. They begin to bang them together and they love the sound that comes from that. It makes them happy. They get excited. They can create sound and they're happy about it. Okay, so what should we expect at nine months? The children are able to clap their hands. They attempt to wave at nine months. So if they are not waving at nine months, it's not a problem. It will be achieved later. They may use the fingers to point at things. So let us be particular about these children beginning to point at things because sometimes they are communicating something to you. And when we ignore it, it, is, it gives the children another kind of impression. So please, let's, let's look at what they point out. And if it's a toy they are looking for, please let's give it to them. They are trying to tell you, they are trying to show you that I am developing my optional skills, my ability to make choices. So let's not ignore them. Because when we ignore them, what we do is that we are sidelining them and we are, we are um, kind of um, hampering their ability to make choices. And sometimes this later affects the children and some children become timid as a result of some of these things. So let's, let's encourage them when they point at something, except it's something that will harm them. Then we can, we can talk back to them that, oh, this one is dangerous. No, don't touch it. This one is dangerous. I can't give this thing to you. And you are explaining to the child why you can't give that to the child. Make, they are able to pick up small objects like finger food. So you give them biscuits at that stage. They are able to chew on the biscuit. They are able to bite. They are able to finger feed on, you know, small, small food. When you give them, in fact, when you put rice before them, they will scatter it, but some will go into it. They are learning the ability to even feed themselves. So let's not say that they will be messy. So you will not give them. Yes, they will mess up their clothes, but they are learning how to feed. They are learning how to be independent. Remember the location. They are able to remember the location of toys and other objects. So when you put something under the blankets, they'll go and look for it. They'll go and look, take the blankets and look for that thing you put there. So it's at this stage, you are able to play games like pick with them. And they love it. They enjoy it at this stage. They remember certain words like their names. They remember words like no, yes. So communication is beginning to start. Language is developing. They make more complex sounds at this stage. The child is likely to begin crawling at this stage. They have, they now have, they now display separation and stranger anxiety. So when the mother is going away, they start to cry. It's not that they don't, 
I mean, they don't want you, the person. Sometimes when they come for therapy, it's like that. When the mother is going to pick something, they just cry. It's not that it's because they are developing. They should be able to tell a stranger from a familiar person. So it's part of development. So every time, nine months old child, you can leave your child and you're going and the child is not troubled, the child is not, please, let's watch it. It's something we have to look out in our children. It's a very protective skill. It's, it's good when our children begin to show this kind of um, milestone. I mean, things at nine months. They can probably put themselves to stand holding onto something, but they might not be able to stand independently may not some may but some may not they can get into sitting position with or without support so at nine months they should be able to get into sitting position without support the child lying down when he wakes up should be able to sit without anybody supporting that child at that stage okay so what should we expect at 12 months sit without support he may begin to walk so sitting without support must be achieved at that 12 month. You should be able to sit without support. May begin to walk or it will come some few months later. Get onto their knees so they'll begin to crawl. Now, recently there has been a, um, the literature that um, walking is not, uh, crawling is not a milestone. But anyway, we would have to also sit as Africans or as Ghanaians to be able to look at our setting. Is crawling not a milestone? I mean, what goes into it? Because crawling is actually a complex, a complex um, development. It's a complex position. And what it does is that it helps with fine motor skills later with their hands, because that is the only time that children bear full weight on their hands as they crawl, they are bare weight. So they are developing the arches of the palm. That's where they are developing strength of the intrinsic muscles of the palm. So, well, we'll have to look at the narrative. We have to look at our session and see, is crawling not a milestone? We will we'll have to start spearhead. We have to spearhead this, this research in our session so that we can say that, yes, as for crawling for us as Africans or for us as Ghanaian, it's a milestone for us. So they begin to pull to stand without support. They cruise along furniture. They explore objects by banging, shaking, dropping. They move objects in and out of containers. They can use sippy cups. So you give them a cup with two hands, they're able to drink from it. They say single words like dada, mama, ouch. When something hurts them, it's ouch. You hear them say that you hear them. So expressive language is beginning to develop at that stage. They begin to express themselves. They try to imitate words and activity. So we have to be also be careful at this stage. What are the things, what are the words we are saying? What are the activities we are doing? They are seeing, they will imitate it. Use gestures such as shaking, the head to say no and nodding to say yes. They, they understand it very well. This, they point as objects and, and the people, the people of interest, people are like of interest to them. So they get interested in faces and then they get to know who is a family member, who is not a family member. At this stage, they begin to know all that. They show preference to certain people and for toys. And there's a caution I might sound here. There are some toys that are appropriate for three months old, that may not be appropriate for a 12 months old. We have to know the kind of toys we are giving our children because that also aids in their development. They may hold marker to scribble at this stage. Okay, so what do we expect at two years? They begin to run, walk, and walk up and down the stairs without support. They begin to scribble. They recognize names of familiar people, objects, and body parts. They follow simple instructions and they are enthusiastic about other children. So when you go to Sunday school and you see them, they are so happy. They want to mingle with other children. So at this stage, school is a mass for them. School is a mass where these things begin to grow. And then from there, they develop their independence and all that. Okay, so these are just the milestone in pictures. All that I've said, this is just a simple the summation of it in pictures. So these are the timelines. So the timelines are, um, you know, as a certain stage, this child should be able to do that. But you see, it's not a jacket. Like, okay, every child must do their outliers. There are some children that might achieve it 
very early and some children might achieve it later but there's there's a cutting off line so if a child is not working by 18 months that's one it's a no no that means that's a problem there's a huge problem so those are so if by six months the child has cannot lift the head to look around send the head from side to side that means that one has delayed and that may, that may be that there might be a problem. So what are some of the developmental tips that we need to take home today? So these are just assignments for us. So we must praise and encourage our children. So when the child begins to lift the head, oh, well done. Oh, you lift your head. Okay. So, oh, you turn from side to side. So we're encouraging them. We are giving applause. We are supporting them to be able to do it. How would we support them? You're also stimulating them with toys to be able to do that. We show them love. So we are interested and we have to engage our children. So we'll come to play. Some people will say, how do we engage our children? You have to also offer a safe learning environment for that child. Offer age appropriate opportunities for that child. Ensure your little ones has enough sleep and nourish them well. So these are some developmental tips. And then let's talk to our children. Let's talk to our children and let's lead by example. That's why I said caution. They imitate what you say. So if you start, if you, you couples and you're using like very, very bad words at each other, the child learns it and will keep it in a sacred place where the child will release it someday and you ask, where did you hear this? And it is from you unknowingly. So let's talk to our children and let's say the right words to them. Let's encourage them. Now, a question I want to sound here is also about our fanciful workers. They are beautiful, our fanciful workers and all that. I mean, it is one thing that hampers development. Our children, some people as early as three months, our children are in workers. I mean, it doesn't aid in the development of the child. If care is not taken, it gives us, it creates complex, it's great, it brings about some complexity in that child's development. You might not notice it early, but by the time the child is supposed to achieve a certain milestone and it is not coming, and medically the child is fine. I mean, we have given you, a pediatrician has given you a report that the child is completely fine, you've done everything. It might be that these are our fanciful workers that we go and buy with our own monies are the ones stopping our children from developing at the right time and rather creating complications. So on that note, we have to also educate ourselves concerning child development, like what we are doing now. So we educate ourselves and we can use it so that we can monitor our children's development. And if there's a problem, you, the mother or the father, should be the first person to see it's not you take your child to the hospital and after we are asking questions then we'll find out that oh really i didn't look at this i didn't really watch out for this no i don't know my child can do this that's like an embarrassing thing it's not like it's like you don't really you're not interested in your child so please let's educate ourselves with this milestone and then in conclusion let's remember all babies are different milestones mark the most milestones mark the month most babies start a certain behavior or ability based on the baby's age but the exact timing may vary i've said that already knowledge on motor development across the lifespan is crucial and is critical so that you know when to intervene or when to aid the child to be able to achieve that milestone it is especially important to provide children opportunity to develop provide them opportunity to develop However, these should be fun and naturally progressive. That's learning through play and daily activity. It's so, so important. Every day of the child, it's learning. They are learning. So please, let's enhance their learning by the opportunities we give them. If you have any concern, please request an appointment with a healthcare provider, and then things will be clarified to you. So screen time not advisable. In fact, the legislature say before two years, there, there should be no screen time before two years. And even after two years, there should be moderation. In fact, some literature says after two years, between two to eight years, two hours a day, 
between two to four hours a day. So two hours, then after eight years, you can increase, it's increased to about that four hours. So, I mean, that should tell you that screen time, you know what I read about this screen time, some of the times they said it causes brain death for the children. It kills their creativity. It makes them stereotype. It makes them stereotype. So they are not able to develop the way they are supposed to develop. So we have stereotype adults. We have adults that cannot think outside the box. I mean, I've gotten a degree and they cannot do anything else. They can't even think for themselves on what to do. The degree is on paper, but they cannot really do anything. They can't fit anywhere. They happen to, they've been, if you look well, well, these adults have been very glued to social media and 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 screen and so outside the bus they cannot really think straight for themselves that's what we do to our children thank you all right so thank you we come to the end of um discussing child developments if there are any questions because of time i would want to go straight to play Dr. Marbell, should I go straight to play or should I allow for time? Um, some questions. Um, I think there's just one question. Let's let me ask that and then you can go straight to play. Okay. So somebody was talking about the worker, why it's not good for them. Okay, so the worker, what we see is that people actually put the children in the worker too early. And they put the, the children in the worker too early in that the child has not developed core control. The child doesn't have trunk control yet. The child is barely now trying to develop their head control. And so when you put them in the worker, they slouch into the worker and you think that they are sitting. They are not sitting. They are being fully supported by the worker. They don't have the ample time to stretch out to develop well. So they are slouched into the worker. Their spine is compromised. Their ability to stretch out and express themselves is also compromised. The other thing is that their feet are hanging. So whichever place their, the tip of their toes gets, they try to fixate. So over time, the back of their toes become tight. And if it's not seen early, it, they develop this tightness that leads to tiptoeing. And some of the tiptoeing can be so bad that it needs surgery to correct. I mean, and then the child didn't come with that problem, but it's been created as a result of your money that you have used to buy that, get, you, you, you use in buying that gadget. So that is it. It's, it's, that's, that's the reason why we're asking for no, no, no worker. Even at all, if you want to use the worker, let the child attain the ability to pull themselves to stand. And then maybe they are beginning to take steps already, but you actually want, uh, maybe you're busy and you're doing other things. And usually when they start cruising like that, they are likely to just hold on to things that are not stable to move around. So that can actually be unsafe for them. So if that's how your environment is, then maybe perhaps around that time, They've developed their back muscles. They've developed ability to control their neck. They've developed their hip muscle because they've been standing independently. Then you can put them in it just to barricade them so that they don't go to maybe dangerous places in the house because if, if they are moving to some areas, it can block them from going there. So maybe at that time, yes, but, but before that time, it's a no, no, no. Thank you. Have I much. answered your yes? Have I answered yeah, the question? Thank you very much. Um, I think okay. you can go on and then we'll answer the questions at the end. Okay, all right. So Thanks. we are going to talk about play. That's my favorite. See how the boy is blowing the bubbles? It's it's my favorite um topic to talk about play. So we are saying screen time, screen time. Let's take away screen time. Let's take away screen time. Okay, what do we replace it with? So it's play. Play is a child's profession. And for just like we go to work and earn money, the child is going to work by playing. And the money they are earning is a lot of learning they are getting from that play. So play, play, play. 
Now, it says, I am a child. I am not built to sit still. I'm not built to keep my hands to myself. Take turns, stand in line, be patient, no, or keep quiet. I need motion. I need novelty. I need adventure. And I need to engage the world with my whole body. So let me play. Trust me. I am learning. That's what's happening. The child is learning through play. All the type of development I talked about, they all come with ease through play. So what is play? Promoting lifetime activity for youngsters. It is the child's perfection. In fact, it is very important for the child's survivor. If a child will be timid in future, if the child will be courageous in future, if the child will be charismatic in future, it all starts from play. If they are good at the profession of play, they will be good in their future careers. It is their profession. So if you see someone who will be successful in their career, please see how successful they play at, as children. It's an opportunity to understand the world and make the sense out of it. Children are born as a bundle of reflexes. All these reflexes, the children must engage them through play to be able to make a sense out of the whole world and to be able to learn. It is the key for valuable learning to take place. So when it comes to play, the director is not the parent. The director is not the guardian. The director is the child himself. And the reward comes from within that child. You as a parent might not see why, ah, this child, you play a lot. I mean, why do you play, 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 play? Why, what do you get from play, please? The child gets a sense of fulfillment. Just like when we are not fulfilled in our respective careers, people get frustrated. And I mean, commit suicide and all that. People get frustrated and all that. When children are not allowed to play, it is very frustrating for them. Sometimes they show this, their frustration in their agitation, in their agitation towards their parents, in their movements around, and in, in the things they do. And you go like, this child is hard to control. This child, just allow the child to play. And you see the calmness within that child. When that satisfaction comes through play, the reward is that you see that child learning and it's developing and it's getting calmer by the day. Okay, so there's this quote that I like so much from Anita Wadley. She's a child psychologist and an educator. When you ask me what I did in school today and I say, I just played, please don't misunderstand me, you see? I am learning to play. I am learning through play. I am learning to enjoy and be successful. I am learning to enjoy and be successful at my work. Today I'm a child and my job or my work is play. So essentially that is the child's occupation, play. So you can see this family playing you can see on the other side, on my left side, you can see some kids playing by themselves. So you see on my left side, there's no parents there. These are just siblings playing. And look at the difference in the things they are playing with. Look at the size of the Lego they are using on my right. And look at the size of the Lego they are using on the left. So you see bigger Legos on the left. This child is just barely being taught how to hold. So hold and release, hold and release. And at what stage do we see this thing? Three months, the child should be able to hold and release. So before three months, if you're putting toys in the child's hand to stimulate hold and release, hold and release, like the way this family is doing, by the time the child is three months, the child would have already attained hold and release. Why? Because the child has learned by the play you have involved the child in. Look at the children on the left side, on the, on the left side. The Legos are smaller. 
So, and that's appropriate for them at this stage. They don't need these bigger Legos. So if you're using these bigger Legos for these other children at this stage, you are not helping them. You are actually not helping them. So you see the things that the children need to play must be age appropriate. Okay, so look at these children at the beach. This is sensory play at the beach. The texture of the water, the texture of the sun, holding each other, social play. So they are learning to play. They are learning their profession very well. See, motor play at stage, jumping the rope. So these are all the ideas. You can see that maybe this one, their parents took them to the beach. This one is in school. So if you have two or three kids at home, this is something they can do by themselves. You don't need to support them. You don't need to be available. Give them the rope. Let them see. It's fun for them. Let just let, let them learn how to use it. And you will see you don't need to be there. They will play and they are developing. This she's she's jumping, she's learning proprioception. So where's my joint in space? She's learning proprioception. So she can calculate distance through the play, the level of play. Children, when they don't involve themselves or they are not so engaged in motor play, some of them become afraid of heights. So you take the child to the story building, the child cannot look down because the child has not played enough motor play to be able to descend that, oh, from here, I have something barricading me. I won't jump over here. I cannot jump over here. So that's, that is how learning takes place through play. So you see, this boy is jumping to just put the ball in the basket. This is a play. This one, they are, there's a circle on the floor. You can see that, I mean, a lot of children. So these are the things that are done in some school, like Montessori. Some schools do this thing. And these are the things that we need to do as parents in the house. Be involved with our children in this. This is more beneficial than screen time. So you see two children playing. They're playing with each other. Mother is not there, father is not there, but they are learning to play. So these are just various things. So when does play start? Right from birth, and it never stops. Right from birth. So your baby is born. The sound you make in the way you hold the baby. They are born with a bundle of reflexes. So the palma grabs, you put your hand in the baby's hand, and the baby is holding you. So they are born with reflexes. What do we have? The five senses is what the child has at that point. Yes, they use their five senses. They also use their five senses. See, he yes, now taste, touch. But I won't talk more about taste because for taste, I mean, the food, they, the breast milk is the main source of feeding. Alongside, they develop other textures, feeding and all that. But when it comes to playing, these four senses are what we actually engage very well the seeing, the hearing, the touch, and the smell. And so as a therapist, I'll add two more movements. Movement is another thing we use to, in the form of play. And when it comes to the movement, there are two types. Movement of the head is different from movement of the body. These are the things we can engage when you have to play with your newborns. So types of play, we have unoccupied play that starts right from infancy and the children, they don't need anybody around in fact to play when you put your baby there and babies sleep most of the time. I mean, like 16, 16 hours, sleep about 15 to 16 hours, they are sleeping. The only active time they have is about seven to eight hours. And within that period, they are feeding, they are doing many things. And their awake period for play, it's very, really small. So we need to chance on that window of the time they want to play. We can use their hands. We can put them down because when they are born, they are all quelled in. They are all bent, fingers bent, I mean, elbows bent, uh, low, uh, legs bent, they are all quelled in. Now, the play we involve them in will help them to stretch out, to begin to stretch out, to stretch out to the world. Here I am, boldly, 
how do we engage them? When you put your child on your chest and you are holding them, it is touch. You're using touch. You are, you are, you are, you are tapping them. You are touching them. It is a form of play. You put your hands in your child's hand and it caps around your hand and she's holding you and you are putting your other fingers all, all over the child's hand and you are just rubbing it around. It's a form of, it's a sensory play. It's a form of play for the child. Some children, the palmer grass can be so strong that when they reach out for their hair, they can pull on their hair and that alone is dangerous for them. And so when you see a child doing that, all you have to do is to bend their wrist. Just bend the wrist. When you bend the wrist, they will release it. So that is how you play with your newborn. Use their reflexes. When you turn the head, it's a form of you're use, it's a form of play to them. So you're turning, they are turning their heads to the sides. They are you bring all these toys before them. So I said that they can see black and white. Can we get this? There's this uh, toy that is made of like fabric. Some has a mirror in it. Others have a squishy sound inside. So there's a, a material, a fabric inside that makes a squishy sound. We have our rattles. We need to use them as early as possible with our newborns. We have parallel play that takes place between 18 months to 24 months. They learn to play alongside and near other children. They have associate play, which starts right. They, the child learns or start to interact with other children. We have social play that starts from about three years. We have motor play that starts from one year where they are learning to jump. They are learning to step on things to see how it feels like. So they will step on a cushion. They can step on, I mean, um, all this thing. They, um, it's made of rubber, but it has holes in it. When they step on it, it makes some sound and it, it cushions in. They are just learning to feel things. They are learning to make sense of things in the world through play. We have constructive play, we have expressive play, and we have fantasy play and cooperative play. So the types of play, as children grow and develop, play also evolves. So unoccupied play, the one I talked about from early infancy, solitary play is also there. They like to play alone from three to 18 months. When you put them on the baby gym, they look at the toys, they can turn, so they are learning to turn their head. They are learning to turn. And that is how the turning begins to come, through play. They look toddlers, they watch, they watch other toddlers play, other older siblings play. And they are also learning, they are picking ideas from older siblings playing. They learn how to relate with others and they learn language through play. So this is an occupied place, so you see, the child is exploring through their senses. So you see that child there, he's playing with the baby gym. It's so fantastic. It has different kinds of toys, different color contrasts. So the child is also developing, they are seeing better. And then they are interacting better with toys. So they are making sense of shapes on objects. And this will reflect in making sense of shape of letters and numbers. This time they are making sense of the shape by feeling it, by touching it. As they grow along, they begin to make sense of letters. They begin to make sense of word. So they make picture photographic memory begins to come to play. Then they are looking at pictures of objects and it stays. This is where they are learning it from. You see that just so, see, hear, smell, taste. I mean, I've talked about that already. And this is how we can involve, uh, this one, you don't need the mother to be there. This one, you can involve, the child will not complain when it's in this position. Leave this child here, the child will play and explore. You'll be surprised what the child can do, amazing things the child can do just by lying in this baby gym. So these are the cardinal points of play with that. So allow unrestricted movement. So the careers we have, and we put our babies in sometimes, except we are going somewhere. And then I'm sure that babies, we keep a lot of, our, I mean, we keep them at home because newborn, we don't want to expose them to the harsh condition, but let's allow unrestricted movement. Let's not carry our babies all the time. Let's not keep them all covered and all wrapped up, like, you know, swaddled all the time. 
let's allow babies free movement. That is how they are playing. They play. They will jack out their hands. They will jack out their legs, but they are playing. They are making sense of their environment. So let's also place them in different position. Let's place them in different positions. So we don't only have the putting up on the back or putting them on the stomach position. That's not the only two positions we have. We have sideline. That is a great position to put your baby. Put them in sideline. It's very good. You can put them in sideline where they are lying exactly over their shoulders and you can block them from side to side. In this position, what you're doing is that they can bring the other hand to touch the other hand. So what you are doing is sensory. They are learning bilateral hand play. This is what you do with your child at very, at, I mean, infancy, very small. So place them in different position and play with them. You can adjust the sideline into various ways, maybe inclining towards lying down or towards facing down. These are all positions to play with your child, engage the child's senses, right? Well, that is the key way to go. Okay, so para playing. They play alongside other children without interaction. They provide, it provides opportunity for role play. So you see that they are playing and this one says me, I'm Captain Planet. This one says I am a, a, a what is it? This they are cut this characters, I am Captain Planet. This one says, okay, I am mommy, I am, I am, I am baby. You see, this is para play. So they are playing, they are doing role play. And this is, they develop great ideas from role play. They gain ideas of property rights, such as this is mine. It's mine. This is my house. You know, they gain those kind of ideas from para play. That's why you see children, this is for me. This is for me. This, they gain that idea from from power of play associate associative play also known as loosely organized play so from your three year for your three years to your four years and usually that's where the problem is we don't know how to do with our three years and our four years five six those ones so we just give them tablets go and sit no children become more interested in other children at their age play activities usually not so organized or coordinated so you just see that they are sitting down no then they are playing, but you, you, you are just thinking, what's, what's, what should I do with this kid? They will form an idea to play. And that they are developing their social skill. They are developing ability to socialize because man needs to socialize. So these are examples. I mean, you can see the activities they are doing. They are doing para play. So some of the activities, just introduce the children to it. And then when you introduce the children to it, a few times that you are available, you introduce them to it. They themselves will pick up the play and then awesomely they'll be doing well. Recently, I mean, one of the plays that we've been discovering, we've been asking, oh, we, we had a lot of time with our children playing with them. So I felt that, oh, they are becoming, they are becoming boring with some of these um, modern was beginning to set. And so I was asking my husband, what kind of game again can we, can we think of? Now, my second child, he doesn't really like to read. When you give him a book, he will start to sleep. So this play just came up. We use the alphabet. Then, so one person will start saying the alphabet, A, B, C, but you will not say it aloud. You will say it in your head. Then another person will say, stop. So if you stop, we'll ask you, which letter did you stop on? So if you stopped at maybe, for instance, C. So we have papers in front of us. Name a name of somebody with C. So then everybody will write. We have papers in front of us. Everybody's writing. Okay, name a country or a town that starts with C. Everybody writes. Name a thing that starts with C. Everybody writes. Name an animal that starts with C. Everybody writes. So it's on a sheet of paper. So if we've written place, um, name, uh, place, uh, animal, thing. So it's there. Then everybody writes. If two people write the same thing, you get five marks each. But if whatever you wrote is not written by anybody, you get your full 10 marks. So that is the game we started. And believe you me, it's work awesomely for my second child. You know why? He wants to read to know names of countries. He wants to know names of things. He wants to know names of things. I mean, people, starting with the alphabet. All of a sudden, he has picked up reading. Like magic, he's picked up reading. 
he's reading books. And then he'll come and ask, mommy, I want to, what is, uh, give me other names of uh, animals starting with Z. And then he goes, he's reading book. Then he, when he finds something, he'll come and ask me. And that is awesome. Because if I give him book to read, it is like a problem. But when this game came up, awesomely, and now we leave them to play the game. My kids, we just leave them to play the game. And when you come, they will tell you the scores. That's his game to improve their learning, construction, reading. So please, the children, let's not limit our children. If I gave them tablets, yes, they will, still, they will sit still. And that's okay, but he's not, he, he's not learning anything from it. He will be just glued to it. And what will come in is addiction. Addiction will follow. And that's the problem that we are clueless about. And we don't know how to even solve the addiction problem. I started having problem with uh, screen time when COVID came in. And they started doing their online activity. That's why I started having problem with screen time with them. But now I've been able to overcome it because I am so dynamic looking at how can we play. So every time I'm scouting on play. So look at these activities we can do with our children, social play. So children interact with other children in play setting. They learn to socialize, social sharing and caring, moral reasoning, develop their sense of value, cooperation. So honesty, truthfulness, they learn through social play. Children cannot lie. They begin to lie when they now see it from us as adults. They learn it from us as adults. So they are very truthful. They learn it through play. But we adults are the ones that begin to pollute the children. So you are on phone. You are not at work. You say, I'm at work. The child is seeing it. That mommy, daddy, you are not at work. But you are telling somebody you are at work. Then they start learning. And that is when the children start getting polluted. And then they grow up and they feel that lying is part of, I mean, existence. And then they grow up and they are not honest in their dealing with people. It is not from the child. It is from the environment that the child has grown. And then now that's why we have problem with, with, with our, our leadership, I mean, politics and all that. Please, these children, all of us were very innocent when we started learning how to play. So let's allow children to play, to develop themselves. And then let's, let's allow them. So these are some social play in pictures. So this is our usual uh, play. Um, you know, like on the left, we used to play it when we were children. In a gorilla era, so the east, the west, uh -huh, that song, we used to sing it and we used to play. So please, let's go back to those things. Those things are very healthy. They help our children to interact. And they interact very well and they become social beings. And then, so this is motor play, example of motor play. So children doing the like running around all this um uh, why, uh moving this uh, hoop again around their waist so that's the name they call it i've forgotten but uh, so these are all games to develop their muscle strength social skills so then they begin to learn their ability to win and lose and they accept it some children cannot play game and lose they always want to win and that is a problem usually it comes from that social addiction and screen time, they always want to play game and win. So when they are playing with other children, they bring it like that. They don't, they cannot take a lose for, for an answer. They must win. And that is not good. So through motor play, children learn, oh, today, today I won. Next week, I'll, today I lost. Next week, I'll try, I'll try again. And that is what motivates them to play again and again and again because they are developing their self-competence. So this is his constructive play. In fact, uh, Einstein, Albert Einstein, the great scientist we know. In fact, he says children, children are the best scientists. They are the best scientists in the world. You can see the picture on my left, my right. See the scientists. They, they, they are splashed things. They are discovering things there. But this is what we don't want to see in our homes. You don't want the, the, the towels to be, to be stained. We don't want anything to be, to be destroyed. We want everything to speak and span. And that's, that is not what will aid in our children developing all around. So this is constructive play. They are exploring to become that engineer they want to be, to become that architect they want to be, to become that scientist they want to be. This is where it starts from. 
So when you look at children, when you even ask children that are talking, what do you want to become? They mention a number of things. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a policeman. I want to, they want to be every and anything because of constructed play. So they have seen that I can do this. I can do this. And they begin to identify the things they do with the kind of professions, the kind of profession around. So they feel that once I'm doing this thing, oh, then I want to become this, I want to become this. As they go along in life, they begin to now see the, the narrowing and all that. Then they begin to see where their strength is and where their weakness is. And they begin to gear towards their, what's, what their, their affinity will take them to. So please, constructive play is very, see some children, when you ask them what they want to become, in fact, I've had uh, several children. I asked them, what do you want to become? I don't know. 17 years, 16 years. I don't know. They tell you blunt, I don't know. And it's very sad. If at 11, 12, 13 upwards, you ask a child and the child cannot tell you what they want to become. It is sad. So constructive play is what will open the child's brain ability to say oh i want to be this if they say they want to be 10 things please allow them just don't restrict them just allow them as they grow along you will see that they will tow their path they will begin to get towards what but at least they have an idea that i can become something through the play i can become something and actually children can become anything in their play they are pilots in their play they are uh, military people they are presidents they are ministers, they are mothers, they are, you can, they can become anything in their play. They can change their role anytime. And that is when they are learning to be the professionals they want to be. Expressive play. It's very important for children to express themselves through play. So expressive play, that's what they are doing. So your children, my house, I always buy A4 sheets. In fact, I spend money to buy, almost every month I buy a pack of A4 sheets because every, if you want to draw anything, come and take A4 sheets. If the, you want to express whatever is inside of you, come and take A4 sheets. It's also a thing that you see, they never get tired of A4 sheets, coloring, Play-Doh. I mean, they will mold things. It's, they never, so they express them. So, so if you see a child that is sad or is abused, you give them a sheet to draw something. They will express it through their drawing. If you see a happy child, it will, they will express it through their drawing. A sad child will express it through their drawing. And that is how you get to know how a child is even feeling how a child is feeling. So please, let's not restrict our children. When we give them the screen time, we are not helping them to explore all these avenues that will help their mind in total development. We restrict them. So fantasy play. So you see, is the child is dressing to, so that's how they do all this um, career day in school. Very beautiful thing they do. So the children just get into that abstract thinking, abstract world. Now that's what the scientists are doing. We are entering abstract world. We can create almost an anything in our abstract world. And then once it's abstract, some way, somehow, we can bring it to reality. We can bring it to reality. That's how scientists are still discovering things. Recently, there was a discovery about um, the sun entering into the sun's atmosphere. NASA, where NASA is going into the sun's atmosphere. Many discoveries are going on. And this is something you can see. Children can, can actually tell you some weird things. And these things are becoming almost real. So someone's telling me, in fact, the Big Bang Theory has been this, this disputed by, by some of these new discoveries that's coming up. And this thing can only happen when we see children through play. Play. So cooperative play. They learn to play organized games. The rules are there. They respect the rules. So like the board game, all this, our Monopoly, Hopscotch. We used to play it when we were children. You jump Hopscotch. It's, it's a beautiful game. There are rules. When you step in a certain number, when you step, uh, double stepping, you, it's wrong. You are out of it. So we respect the rules. That will create respect for one another as the children grow up. They respect authority. They respect rules. They respect regulations. There are some children, they don't respect anything. They just will not respect. They just will not take instruction. When you see those children, they are children that are glued, glued to the screen. They take the words of the screen. They take, that is like their home. 
those that thing is their friend so aside the screen every other thing is like every other person is like non not unanimated i mean you are just you are just not a human being to them or they don't see you in their space it's like you are abstracting their space and said children will not obey rules they will not respect views they will not respect when they start to talk only them must talk nobody else view is accepted so please we can see how vast play is is to children so this twist game is there it's a very beautiful game you can do with your family. The children can do it. This game you don't even need this board. When you have a plane, you can look for chalk, different colors of chalk. You can use like red, black. Okay, so put your hand, put your left hand on the green, or on the green circle. Your right hand on the red circle, and then put your two feet on the blue. So it's a twist. It's the ability to be able to turn your body in a certain way. So it, it gives you a sense of body awareness. This is a game that is beautiful. I play this game with my kids at home. So it's beautiful. Sometimes if your compound is, is, is big, I mean, you can even use a, a distance. They can dip their feet in the paint or like color, a poster color, and then step on it. Then you wash with water, they, they easily go. Then you put it there so you can also use that instead of making them circle, you can use your feet, you can use your hand. So it's in various forms. We have the Scrabble to build words. So we we'll learn word building, Monopoly to learn about, about investment. So children will begin to learn about investment through Monopoly. And it's a beautiful game to play. So the distance is wide and wide and wide. So play is an essential and crucial part of all children's development. Play starts in infancy and ideally continues throughout life. So you see some adults now want to play. When they missed out on play, when they were children, now they want to play. They want to play with any and anything. Eh? So please, let's, let's just play. Let's allow the children to play, to develop. Play is how children learn to socialize, to think, to solve problems. They mature and mostly importantly, they have fun. Play connects children to their imagination, their environment, their parents, family, and the world. So the last time I did some presentation like this, I said, play will connect you and your children. So you see, they will remember all the times you're playing with them. Mommy plays with me, daddy plays with me. So the bonding becomes stronger. So when those children even have grown and have left home, that bonding remains because you were a part of their life during their learning stage when they were developing through play. So you were a center part of their life through play. And that's when they were developing many things. So when they grow, that those children like, there's no, the likelihood of abandoning their parents is very slim. But a child that you are not involved in, you leave your child to tablet, screen time every time. They will not develop emotions. They do not have emotion. They won't have the emotion. So they don't care about their environment. What they care about is their screen and their work. So the child can be prosperous in their activity, maybe fixated. So he's, he's doing well academically or something. And then that's all. Every other aspect is poor. So that child grows and is so glued to things not caring about parents, not caring. They are, they are wealthy children whose parents, I mean, there's nothing to write home about, yet are not bothered about them. If you go into it, parents were not involved in their production when they were young, where they were directors of the play. You were not there as a participant in the play. You were not there as, as, as a uh, this thing in the play, even observer in the play, you are not there. So they've grown, they've cut you out of it. You are not there. And so that is what is happening. That's the sad aspect. So parental involvement in the child's world, it's not supposed to be taken for granted. It's true, we are busy. I mean, this, our world has changed. Mother is working, father is working. I mean, eight to five, health as better, don't have time. These things I'm telling you about, nannies cannot do it. Play, they, they want to sleep. When you go, no, they, to, they are finding their level. They want to sleep. So are they the ones that will now involve the child in play? Grandparents at that time too, their niece and all that, they can do very little. See, but we, that we know the essence of some of these things, we'll be able to involve our children in it. At least we'll create time. 
not busy, 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 and we leave the children to the screen. It's because we are busy. We are not giving the children option. And then we give them the screen. Okay, don't bother me. Just go and stay by. And we think that our children are becoming well behaved when, when, we, when we give them the screen. No, they are being glued to a certain world. And that is a dangerous thing for them. And sometimes the things even they see on the screen is not even helpful for them. And the screen, the light continues, the light is not regulated. Because even we at, at workplaces, various places, we want to screen our computer and dim the light. We know we have a way of trying to get around it. And that's why most adults, we are wearing glasses. Because our sight is having problem. We are beginning to have problem with our sight. But if we do that with our children, our children will begin to have problem with their sight. The sight that's supposed to develop and carry them through life. At very tender age, they are already having sight problem. And that's so during the COVID states, my second son, who doesn't really like reading to us well, that was when he became glued to. He started having reaction with his eyes. His eyes were turning brown and all that. But when I started taking, when COVID, thank God, they returned back to the classroom and this thing was over. Then the thing started clearing because before then, no, even way before then, they only watch TV on weekends. And the weekends, I give them some number of hours. So specific programs. If you finish watching, you have to choose the program you want to watch. And then when you finish watching that program, that means, so if Saturday and Sunday, even Sunday is like half of, of the Saturday's home. So if you utilize all the hours, then that's all. It's only Saturday and Sunday, but now it's even no more. No Saturdays, no Sunday. Let's involve in play. So we play. Let's do, and now they forget about TV. They don't even know that there's TV in the house. They just want to play with each other. Before then, they would just be on each other's throats. They can't play together and then you will have peace. But now they have learned to cooperate. They have learned to understand each other. Okay, you win this time. Me too, I'll try and beat you another time. And peacefully. So I can have my peace of mind and they are developing through play. And that is what we need to do. So playing with your children, establish the strength and that's bond forever. Let's be part of their life. Okay, so this beautiful family, we can see they are playing with their kids. And it's beautiful, it's awesome. A lot of learning is taking place. Even how to become family is taking place so that we don't have the odds happening. The odds that are happening to our society today it's some of these, but if we have families playing together, the little time we have, we can play together like this. Then the future is bright. Our children will learn family rules, family regulation, respect authority, respect, respect the rules in society. And we won't have truants in our society. Please, let's allow our children to play, play, play so that they can be at best in their profession of playing. Thank you, any question? Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. This was very wonderful. Play is good, it is a child's profession. So I have um, some hands raised up already and I have some questions in the chat box also. I'm wondering which one should I do first? Okay, let me do mm -hmm. the chat box. <laughs> so um one person wanted to know how long children were supposed to stay in the high chair um mm -hmm. yeah high chair and then people also want to have your contacts and your email so let's okay. the high chair one okay so the high chair you know you can you start placing the child on the high chair when the child is now attaining sitting or about to attain sitting. If the child has not attained sitting and you put the child in the high chair, the child will still slouch in the high chair. So the spine will be compromised. And so and the high chair, when they sit in it, if they are beginning to attain sitting or about to attain sitting, you can put them for feeding. You can put them in for feeding. Uh -huh, basically for feeding, because sometimes we want the children to be part of the family 
male sitting around the family and also to free the mother so that you know you are eating you are not carrying a child and so the child is sitting by you seeing how family is eating and all that it is form of learning and bonding and that's when the child is attaining sitting but after the child has finished eating or you are finished as a family please let the child be on the floor let the child be on the floor it is better the the benefits from sitting on the floor on the mats or yoga mats or alphabetical mats all these other mats it's more important it's more beneficial than the high high seat thank you thank you a 14 year old who is behaving very much like a child mm -hmm. and when he says anything you realize that it doesn't make sense mm. Since parents is wondering what is happening <laughs> okay so 14 year old behaving like a child and when yes. he says things it doesn't make much difference i'm sure that um what you're complaining about i don't think really started when he was 14 mm. i'm sure it's something that has built over time a period of time so if if it has built over a period of time it's unfortunate that maybe you did not see it early when it started but you can actually see us in the clinic for assessments. Let's yeah. just see that child and assess. And then we can ask you a few questions to see exactly where that is coming from. And then we can now give you our intervention and expert opinion about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And a three-year-old who is not speaking discernibly. I, I'm wondering what discernibly. I mean, <laughs> says if a child is not speaking discernibly, by the mm -hmm. age of three, is a cause for a concern. So, um, discernibly, as in you cannot hear properly, or they are not making any sense at all. Um, can you please um be clarify? Um, Munia to Sulemana. Um, yeah, maybe. So, yeah. Okay. So, so yes, you. We need that clarification. Yeah. It, will, it will help us a lot. Yeah. Because like I, mean, I said, language development is also through play. So yeah. by that age three, the child should be making audible sounds and talking. So yeah. if by that age three, the child is not talking, he's not making sound, you can't hear him or what he says is not really, doesn't make sense. Please don't sit at home. That one, yeah. please come. We have, we will, we will do the assessment and then we will let you see a language therapist to be able to assess further yeah yeah so by age three they should speak in sentences short yes. at least mm. three forward sentences and yeah. at least 75 percent of what they are seeing should be heard by yes. strangers so if that's not yes. happening then you need to see somebody for assessment okay yeah. wonderful and people have been asking about the slides and everything please the slides and the recording will be on our facebook page and i think godfrey mm. has that link also there and has put also our numbers there. If you want to see Madam Charity, you can call and book an appointment to see her. Um, okay, you can't make out anything they are saying. Ah, okay, so she means you can't make out anything they are saying. Then we have to please, you mm -hmm. need to yeah. let this child come for an assessment. Assessment, yeah. Be able to hear something they are saying okay mm -hmm. um, yeah. charity, lots of encouragement good presentation thanks for the response um, um excellent presentation very interesting beautiful presentation plenty accolades mm -hmm. so thank you very very much I uh, saw welcome. Up. um if you had your hands up um can you unmute unmute and then ask your question we have a few more minutes oh we've passed our listening but I, I, we can allow five more minutes if you have any question do i have any hands up or maybe they can't amuse themselves uh, maybe they can't amuse themselves okay, maybe you should um, yeah okay I've, I've done it. Please, you can unmute yourselves now. Um, let's start with Nora. Nora. So, um, good, good evening. evening. Good, good evening. evening. 
Yes, so I wanted to find out at what age do you start demanding for orderliness from children? So probably by, so you, you are allowing them to play, but then you know sometimes they're growing, so you expect them to be a little bit disciplined, to be incentive, to be descending, concerning their environment, and then concerning relation to others. So I, I with the milestones, at what age do you really demand for that? You demand is it from five years okay. or seven years? You start seeing that okay, this at this age, I should start ensuring they are not so much into playing but doing things that can be helpful to the whole family. Okay, so um, thank you, Nora, for the question. You see, play is in levels, some by the time they are even six months or nine months. The solitary, the unoccupied play, it goes away. It's like they don't, they are not interested to play with things alone. They are interested to play with their counterpart, their friends. So as they are developing, they are already developing self-regulation. They are developing self-regulation. They are looking at respect, respecting views. When they begin to play the board game, they are beginning to play um, this twist game. They are taking instructions. So naturally, as play is evolving, they are learning how to play, but they are learning to regulate. They are learning, you see, what parents don't understand is that, stop, we, we, we have our own um, uh, this expectations. We said that, oh, you, you are four years, or you are six years, you should start doing this, you should start doing this. Please, it doesn't come like that. The children naturally, as they are playing, they begin to orient themselves in a certain way that there are some games as they grow. Recently, I was telling my son that, oh, I have Lego in the room. Charlie, if you want to play, you go and play with the Lego. He told me that, mommy, ah, Lego, I am, I am older than the Lego. You want me to go and play? And this is 10 years old. You want me to go and play with Lego? Oh, no, this Lego in the room, I'm older than it. Then the older brother just jumped in and said, yes, mommy, we need the tiny, those tiny, tiny Legos, the one that have like the magnet form so that we can build, we can continue to build our world. So you see, as they are growing, let's you stop them. You see, in the midst of their development through play, you, when you come in and you want to be the director, then that's where you start having all these other reactions of the child has grown and still doesn't want to outgrow it. But when you allow them, the self-regulation begins to come. The rule, okay, so you sit here and play. By the time you're telling you, you sit here and play this board game, sit here and play this scrabble, sit here and play this game, sit here, and... that's regulation. The child is learning regulation from there. You are not doing it like being on paper, black and white. You must sit here, you must sit like this, you must do like this, no. But as he's learning and upgrading, in the levels of play, the child is already learning regulation and maturity. Mm. So, Nora, just try it. Okay. Thank you. So, if you if you if you lack some ideas, you can see us. I mean, we can we can all brainstorm. We can give you ideas and all that, and you see it changing. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's just that, as you said, we we when we were growing up, probably by six years, you are able to take care of your younger siblings and stuff. So, you have a seven years. Mm. Who mm. is so concerned with herself and being, and then now oh, since there's a grown to me, so that's I think it's the expectation. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, expectation. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Lawrence. Lawrence. I want, says, I want to ask permission and leave. I appreciate the presentation, but I have to attend the program. So. Okay. Do you have Do you have a question? No, I'm good. Okay, all right. All, all right. right. Thank you. Thanks for Thank joining. You. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Lawrence Kumi says that mine has to do with a four-year-old who is academically okay, but finds it difficult to make meaningful statements and can't complain when things are happening to him. Mm. Lawrence, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so... You know, like I said, if you look at that child, you can see that, I mean, associ associative play, parallel play comes into play there. 
when this child is involved in power play, playing alongside with other children. Sometimes your house is different. Another person's house is different. But when you meet and you're playing, children begin to learn from other children. In fact, the first time my children wanted to use fork and knife, they, they went somewhere. They just saw it. Hey, the children like, like they were playing and then they gave them food to eat. And it was like, oh, we are all sitting around the table and they were chatting and these other children started taking fork and knife. They were like, wow. So that's <laughs> how they looked at them. They liked it. They were watching them like play. When they came, we said, mommy, we are not eating with spoon. We will eat right with spoon again. I said, why? I said, ah, mommy, it is nice to eat with fork and knife. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it became a play in our house. So let's try. Let's see how we we'll eat well with fork and knife. I'll start giving awards. That's how it goes. I'll start giving out. So like play, like play. We are developing table manners. But if I just said straight away, please, in my house, we'll eat fork and knife. You people, everybody is eating with fork and knife. It will look strange to them. They look at, ah, mommy, where are you coming from? Another planet. We are enjoying our spoon. What is fork and knife? But you see, when they saw other children alongside each other, it was simple for me. So now when you give them rice, no matter what you give them, they will want to use fork and knife. And so now I have to tell them there are places you won't get knife. So you just have to use the fork. And they are beginning to adjust. So that is how it, it goes. So please, let's, let's allow children. So this child, allow this child to play. Usually I have problem with, especially when they are lone children, when the child is alone. And then maybe firstborn or is the only child. Please. If if it's an only child, there are cousins, there are places for play, playground, just take the child to the playground, see how the child play with other children. Just sit there and observe and see your child will evolve beautifully. So please, let's give it a try. Thank you. Thank you. Lawrence, so for your four-year-old who can't make meaningful statements, as we said earlier on, by four, they should be able to make meaningful statements. So if that is happening, please get him checked by a language therapist to see if he has any delays in his communication or language skills, and they can, mm. they can give him some help. And um, Sylvia yeah. says, how do I regulate screen time for a child who is hooked to the screen, especially when she seems to be learning a great deal online? How old is that child? How old is that child? So how old is your child? And what exactly is she learning? Mm. She She's seven years. Mm-hmm. So she likes to listen to stories. She's always listening to stories, watching videos on how to draw, and then draws along with what is happening. That's what she does. Okay. Um, okay. Seven. So, yeah. yeah. So seven-year-old. She's learning, she's learning stories. She can get the stories in hard copy book. The hard copy book is brilliant. In fact, the sense of feeling is coming even from there as well. So hard copy book, open the book, read. It's, it has a way of even helping the eye. The screen is not good for the eye of the children. The lights cannot be regulated. It looks as if they she, but she will do better. In fact, she will be more academically inclined and do excellently well if she's reading from the book reading even it's so tiresome for some of us even to be reading online and reading from our screens the eye the eye muscles get tired let alone a little child so please so i'm pleading with you give that child hard copy of the same storybook and that one will help the child better and the drawing there are books that teaches about drawing in fact when they read, they can actually draw the stories they read. So give them that exposure. Let's, the screen time, it does make them fixated. It is not the best for their eye, for their brain development. You might think that that child is smart. Yes, might be smart, like I said, but they are just stereotyped. So aside reading, when you give that child another tax, that child begins to struggle with another tax. When it comes to creativity, when it comes to, I mean, sports, when it comes to other, you see that the child begins to struggle. It's not all encompassing, but if the child is reading, the child is sitting in a certain way to read. The eye is, is, is having its best. The eye muscles are not getting tired at that age, seven years. 
you can read hard copy in fact read hard copy so i had to write summaries of the story she's reading it's a beautiful thing so my six-year-old daughter reads the story and then she will write the summary of the story and then she'll come mommy you know the aspect i like and she'll tell me okay tell me the aspects you like about the story and she will say i said okay draw the best part of the story for me and she's drawing the best part of the story she's doing animation from her mind she's doing animation from her and that's one there's a balanced development it's already interacting with mommy She's telling me she's interacting with her book. She's interacting with her hand. Motor skills is coming in and all that. So please ask for the screen time, please. So after, I mean, seven years old, if you, if you want the child to have screen time at all, please, not more than one hour. Please. It's, it's, I mean, we're not saying we're taking everything away, but you know, just maybe like one hour, it's okay. She can have her favorite cartoon and all that. Within one hour, I mean, it's all done. That's all fine. Exactly. Thank you. So, Sylvia, if she's addicted, that one, you treat it as an addiction. You take it away and then you start slowly. If it's not an addiction and it's just too much, as um, Charity has said, you have to regulate it. Keep it to one hour. The other times, give her something else to do. And always remember, you are the parent, you are the older person in the, in the house, and you are doing it for her good. In the beginning, there's going to be resistance, but after mm, some time, yeah. if they realize yeah. this is what yeah, the rule is, yeah. they always come around. Anthony, you've had your hand up for a long time. Sorry, please ask your question. All right. Uh, mine is not really about, uh, it's not really a question, but Auntie Charity, I hope you can see your daughter, this lady. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. How are you? <laughs> hey, I can see you. Oh, that's my family. Yeah. Oh. I joined it not too long ago, but I must say I've enjoyed the presentation so far. Thank you so much. Oh, my girl has grown old. Very, very hey. good. <laughs> Oh, um, you've made my night you've made my night oh thank you i mean the presentation is very nice and i wish i had joined in earlier but at the little part i i got i think i really really learned i wish i joined in very early the next time again so thank you so much okay. it, was yeah. good, it was a good presentation hi there thank you <laughs> anthony there we the recording is on our Facebook page, so you can listen to it all over again. And the right. slides will also be there. Thank you for okay. joining. Thank, Thank you. you for joining. Um, Abdul, your two-year and eight-month-old who doesn't speak or respond to her name, that is a concern. Problem, yeah. You need to speak. Um, um, I, I, um, Charity said that six months, up to between six months and even one year, they respond mm -hmm. to her. And I yes, they Anna. respond. Oh, they respond. Oh. Here in India, it's, it's fully developed. They respond. It's yeah. not that they're not able to tell you, but they respond. You see them responding to it. Yeah. So if two and two years, eight months, please, yes. please come and let's assess that child. So, please. so, so they need to be assessed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Today we've gone way beyond our time. It's mm. almost seven, 10 minutes to seven, but this shows you that people really need this information. And Charity, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful, excellent presentation. You got some thank shout you. outs from your PML team. They were telling <laughs> congratulations from PML team. Mamiya says congratulations. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. This is really an important topic. And unfortunately for us parents, uh, uh, the era in which we are in is really challenging. You have yes, to see is. everybody is trying to make money. It's a mm -hmm. rat race out there. There's no time. And now the screen and the, I mean, when I was growing up, TV was only also for Darcy on Sunday at 8 o'clock. <laughs> That's all I remember. You see, you. Now, there's a screen everywhere. You can have cartoons everywhere. So it's more mm. challenging. But we can also and um, make in an intentional effort to remember that yeah. play is important for our children and actually make the effort to be able to um, engage them in other ways apart from the screen. So thank you everybody for joining us this month's Parents Roundtable discussion. We'll come back 
to you next month with another interesting topic. If you need any help, if you need to reach us, if you think you need an assessment, please get to us at Mission Pediatrics. We'll put our contact out there. You can get to our website, um, www.missionclinicgh.com. And you can find us there. You can find us on Facebook also and help us to help your um, child. Thank you. And bye-bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.